Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 17th of October when we celebrate the life of Saint Ignatius, an early 2nd century martyr and bishop of Antioch. Ignatius was a convert in his youth, said to have been a disciple of Saint John the Evangelist. He became Patriarch of Antioch in his fifties, then, in a time of persecution, he was taken to Rome where he met his martyrdom in 107 or 108 AD. On his way to the imperial city, he wrote to churches a series of letters on important issues facing them, on the sacraments, on the role and authority of bishops in the church, and on Christian unity. This correspondence forms a key part of a collection of works by teachers who succeeded in the role of the Apostles. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Creator of all, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. Open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and for ever. Amen. O come, let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Ten thousand thousand are their tongues, but all their joys are one. Worthy the Lamb that died, they cried, to be exalted thus. Worthy the Lamb, our lips reply, for he was slain for us. The whole creation joins in one to bless the sacred name of him that sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 146 Alleluia! Praise the Lord on my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. As long as I have any being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth, on that day all their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise for ever, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong, and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that are bound, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and widow, but the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign for ever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Lord of all, our breath and being come from you, yet our earthly end is dust. As you loose the bound, and feed the hungry, so bring us in your mercy through the grave and gate of death, to the feast of eternal life, where you reign for evermore. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will renounce the faith by paying attention to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared with a hot iron. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving 
by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing to be rejected, provided it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. If you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Jesus Christ, nourished on the words of the faith and of sound teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with profane myths and old wives' tales. Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of the same value, godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and struggle, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Saviour of all people, especially of those who believe. These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I arrive, give attention to the public teaching of Scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy, with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this you will save both yourself and your hearers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul had evangelized in Ephesus. Timothy looked after the congregation there after Paul commended them to his charge. Timothy was a Greek Cypriot, his Jewish mother an early Christian convert, so he was well equipped to be a pastor to an ethnic and culturally diverse congregation, although he may have been younger than the average age of adult members. Even with Paul's backing, he'd have to earn their respect as a spiritual leader. There are in the church at Ephesus some who entertain views common enough among extremist religious sects, both Jewish and pagan, people with a pessimistic view of the world as a hostile place, requiring a lifetime of special diets and rituals they believe would magically protect them and make them feel less insecure. Just keep reminding them, says Paul, the gospel proclaims everything is God's good gift to be received and celebrated with thanksgiving, not with fear. This is dead easy for Timothy. It's how his mother raised him. Just be yourself, in other words. Ignore all this nonsense talk and alarmist gossip around you. Reading scripture together and explaining it to others is the spiritual training Paul recommends. Timothy's life and conduct will be the example that illustrates his teaching ministry. Timothy is given responsibility by those who laid hands on him and called him to be more than just a church helper. They saw something in him he may not have realised was there himself. By keeping up his spiritual training, he will grow in stature as a leader, seen worthy to be regarded as an old head on young shoulders. It's not something he can do for himself, but a spiritual blessing given to the church in him. God chooses people to become ministers of the gospel, not us. But do we notice them, recognise them, encourage them? to enable us to be truly a church for others, as Christ himself was man for others. I have given you as a light to the nations, I have called you in righteousness. I am the Lord, I have called you by name, my glory I give to no other. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I have given you as a light to the nations. I have called you in righteousness. Let us bless God the Father, whose love guides and nourishes his people. Glory to you for ever. Most merciful Father, we pray to you for your love, for you wondrously created us and even more wondrously restored us to grace. Glory to you for ever. At the beginning of this day, fill our hearts with zeal for serving you, so that our thoughts and actions may redound to your glory. Glory to you for ever. Purify our hearts of every evil desire. May the faith and courage of St. Ignatius inspire us to do your will, and bear witness to your truth and love. Glory to you for ever. Open our hearts to the needs of all people. Remember those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, all victims of violence, poverty, injustice, sickness or infirmity. Fill us with love, respect and concern for one another. Glory to you for ever. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Feed us, O Lord, with the living bread, and make us drink deep of the cup of salvation, that following the teaching of your Bishop Ignatius, and rejoicing in the faith with which he embraced a martyr's death, may we be nourished for that eternal life for which he longed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. <laughs>